Hello and welcome to Megawatt, where each week we give you the lowdown and the latest piece of kit from the world of technology and gadgets. This week, with only days away to the Apple iPhone announcement, we've decided to play with the main competitor, the HTC Diamond. So will it impress on the dance floor? We've come down to Eve, a club in town, to find out. So here's the HTC Diamond, but what do you actually get for your money? Well, start off, you get a nice, bright, crisp VGA quality screen. It's also, from a connectivity point, got HSDPA, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, including A2DP, so you can wirelessly stream music from the device to some headphones. In addition to that, it has 4 gig of internal memory, and it has a 3.2 megapixel camera on the back. The whole thing is run on Windows Mobile 6.1 and the browser is Opera. So they're the main tech specs. What you don't get, however, is a flash for that camera. You don't get a 3.5mm socket for your headphones. Unfortunately, you have to use the dongle they provide it in the box. And there's no micro SD slot either because they've done so much to cram everything into this handset to make it small that there just wasn't the space. Will it work? What are the best features about it? Stay tuned and we'll test them out for you. Using either the HSDPA or Wi-Fi connectivity, internet is at the core of the HTC Diamond. Instead of using Internet Explorer from Microsoft, the company has taken a brave move, even though it runs Windows Mobile 6.1 operating system, and turned to Opera Mobile instead. What that means is that you get a more intuitive browser all round. And in fact, you can use your finger to scroll around the pages. Now we've loaded up the BBC page, and as you can see, I can just scroll around it to see what I want. Double tapping gets me in and out the page. And I can also use the accelerometer to twist it sideways and scroll in and move around as it loads up different areas of the page. It's all really intuitive. Obviously, clicking on a story gives you the story that you want. And there's even, if we go back to the home screen, support for multiple tabs, so you can have multiple pages running at the same time, as well as the ability to access YouTube videos as well. Being a work device, you'll also want to get your email as well. Now this uses the regular Microsoft Mail that you get with Windows Mobile, and you get this pretty interface. Obviously clicking through to the inbox gives you the ability to access your emails, and it's all very straightforward to anybody that's ever used Windows Mobile. You can set it so that it downloads your email every five minutes, uninterrupted, so you've always got new mail when you pick it out of your pocket. And of course, you can automatically send and receive when you are anywhere. Setup was okay, it wasn't the most simplest of things, but overall, it's not too bad. Now, when it comes to entering and writing emails, you have three keyboard options all on screen. You have the first one, which is we've been using the most, which is very similar to the BlackBerry Pearl. So you get, it's a 20 key keyboard, and you get two letters per option. If you're feeling fiddly, you can opt for the full QWERTY keyboard. However, we found that really it is probably worth using the included stylus to get those letters correct each time without too many mistakes. And then finally, for the texters amongst you, you can opt for a regular phone keyboard, which will just give you, you know, T9 texting capabilities. And that's email and internet on the HTC Diamond. Here's a neat little trick for you. Did you realize that some printers allow you to print double-sided, either so you can save the environment, save on paper costs, or merely just to give you a book feel to your documentation if you've got more than two pages? We're gonna show you how to do it on the HP OfficeJet Pro L7590, uh, just because it's one of the printers that allows you to do this. So we've got a document ready to go. All you have to do is pull up the print box, find in your printing software, we're using a Mac, but obviously it works on a PC as well, Find two-sided printing, make sure you've got the right paper selected, select the button and press the print button. It prints the first page, it allows the ink to dry, which even if you're not printing on two sides is always a good thing to do so you don't get smudges on the paper.
wait for it to dry, and you've got double side printing. And it's as easy as that. When it comes to the multimedia aspects of the phone, the HTC Diamond has a 4 gig internal storage. It has a 3.2 megapixel camera, but there are some downsides, unfortunately. There's no flash for the camera, there's no micro SD card slot for expanding stuff, and there's no direct 3.5 mil. Instead, you have to use the, the included dongle in the box. What you do get, however, is quite a loud speaker. So we play tunes quite easily from the screen, and if when you want to change track, all you have to do is scroll down the screen Alternatively, you can use the D-pad at the bottom. Of course, you can access the library as well. So you can do it in the old traditional sense. And you have, you know, by artist, by album, playlists, all songs, etc. And it's all pretty simple and very easy. On a camera front, you have the ability to view images or take photos or even video. The camera, you just switch to the sides. You can see it's quite dark in this room, but it sort of works quite well. We take a picture. Takes a bit of time. Let's try and focus in. And snap. There we go, there's cameraman Ben filming me. Now, once you've done that, we can then view that image. There it is, so you just by tapping on it, and it gets you large. Now, because it's got the accelerometer, you can spin from side to side to see the better option. Now, because this hasn't got multi-touch, i.e. that pinch mechanism that the iPhone has, you have to swirl in like a corkscrew to zoom in, and then you swirl out. Now, you can then send this via email, turn it into a slideshow, do some other functions with it, save it to screen, etc. We're not going to make this our screen image. Now, elsewhere on the multimedia front, a really cool thing is a, one of the games that comes with it. We just go to programs, a fun little game called Tweeter, which uses the accelerometer to move a small ball on the screen. And it's very traditional to the, it's very similar to that traditional Victorian game where you have to move ball around. Now the best thing is if Ben comes in above, you can see that me shifting the device around actually moves the ball. Now when, you, when the ball hits the side, I actually get a little thud. So it's really responsive. And it's amazing. It really feels like I'm controlling this. I've suddenly not got a phone, but I've got this little ball in, oh no. It gets very hard, but at the same time, incredibly addictive. The final multimedia thing we want to show you is weather. And again, you can download information and see what's happening. So, for example, we've tapped in a load of here. So in Port Stanley in the Falklands, it's nighttime and two degrees. It's uh, sunny and 17 in Windsor. It's, uh, so we've got, we've got 17 and sunny in London. And in Boston, Massachusetts, well, it looks like it's pretty much overcast and cloudy. You can also get a five-day forecast as well to give you some idea, which is brilliant if you're going on holiday or you just want to see what the weather is before you step out the door. So does it live up to its name? Is it a diamond in the rough? Or is it probably just a diamond geezer that you should think about? Well, not really think about knowing at all. Well, overall, the HTC is very impressive. It's got lots of connectivity options from a spec sheet point of view. It's pretty much got it all, and it's easy to use. Compared against the big competitor in the market, the iPhone, it does hold its own. It's smaller, the screen's brighter, the camera is better, it supports video, it supports Bluetooth, the browser's good, and everything of that nature. Although I think probably as a touchscreen device, if you're not worried about having mobile 6.1 inside, then the iPhone is probably the killer application that would just ease out, especially when you take on into account the App Store, which will allow it to do a lot more that you probably want, rather than just a phone in a box that suits everyone. That said, overall, we're quite impressed. We do like it. There are some complaints. One, that, that you don't have a micro SD card if you want to expand the memory. Two, that there's no headphone socket on there for connecting to your, your headphones straight away. And thirdly, that you know Windows Mobile 6.1 is okay, 
but it's just always a little bit fiddly. There have been times where we've gone to press the button, perhaps used too thick a finger, and then had to result to the stylus. And you know, I thought we were past that in a mobile phone. I don't really want to be sitting there with a little stylus tapping away. The predictive text is good, the keyboards are good. I really like the option of having a QWERTY keyboard or the 20 key keyboard. And if you're a BlackBerry Pearl user or someone that uses your email and wants to know what's going on in the office but aren't expected to write long replies, then this is a really good device to look for. And if you're not ready to go Apple or just don't like the company from California, then the company from Taiwan is one to look at. Well, that's it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Why don't you tune in next time for more news, reviews, tips, tricks, opinions, and much more. I'm Stuart Miles. This is Megawatt TV. Thanks for watching. Thank you.